Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bhartia and welcome to TFI Let's Talk. And today we have two guests, uh, Sean Amara, Field CTO at Mirantis, James Malakowski, Head of Solution Architects at Equinix Metal. James, Sean, it's great to have you both on the show. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. I want to talk to you, James. Uh, we have covered Equinix Metal uh, a lot of time earlier, and you folks, instead of building your own managed services, you stress a lot on partnership, you know. And so, can you quickly talk about the importance of these kind of partnerships, not only for Equinix Metal, but also for the whole ecosystem? Sure, absolutely. So, first off, thanks for having us today. Um, from my perspective, um, the partnerships are really about. Um, you know, one plus one equals three. How do we enable customers to do more? Um, with Metal and Equinix specifically, we typically deal in primitives, right? Basic level services, networking, compute storage that, you know, customers typically compose to do much more interesting, you know, business level things. And for us, it's really critical to have the right solutions, the right partners to really help, you know, customers get from point A to point B, you know, without us having to necessarily do all that heavy lifting. Sean, if I you know ask the same question to you, uh, what is the importance of these kind of partnerships for Mirantis? For Mirantis, this allows us to expand our services that we can offer to our customers. You know, as a company, we're very focused on providing the whole as a service experience through our software products. Um, through Equinix Metal specifically, we can leverage their infrastructure, their networking, their on-demand of bare metal, um, and that partnership allows us to to not only address a wider audience, but also to do that on demand, which is a major advantage for us in our software model. If I ask, you know, of course, both Mirantes and Equinix, you folks offer your own set of uh, services, but with this collaboration, what real benefits users, because sometimes this cloud native work can become too complicated, too overwhelming. So let's, let's fo because focus is mostly on users, right? Helping them in their journey. So uh, let's, let's talk about how this collaboration help the, the user of your services. So sure, I mean, from our point of view, it really is simplicity. Um, we're able to give users a much simpler, much easier access to, to infrastructure. And we've, we're, we're in this world where we're trying to move between public and private cloud with a lot of customers are on-prem um, by really enabling them to have that on to have that on-prem capability through Equinix Metal, but with the simplicity of public cloud. Um, and that's really what it boils down to for, for our cust existing customers today and new customers. So from my perspective, um, I've seen customers uh, from all different backgrounds and use cases, you know, investing in cloud native. And depending on where they are in that journey, you know, they need varying levels of help. And one of the biggest challenges I've seen in the market is how do we find that path? How do we find the best partner? How do we find someone that can help us, you know, you know, experience that journey and, and actually manifest that journey uh, to cloud native and digital transformation? What I find is most people are struggling. It's really difficult. It's really complex. They need a partner. They need a, you know, a North Star to help guide them on that journey. And that's really the value that, that we see. Can you also talk about the kind of, you know, importance of bare metal because there are some use cases like edge is a very good use case where developers will have to learn to deal with bare metal as well so can you talk also about you know why developers should kind of care about or you know uh, have bare metal also in, in in their you know in their mind live in a world that's pretty heterogeneous and, and diverse at this point right i mean take you know crypto into account now right that's sort of a new way to abstract compute and databases in, in a new way for, for developers, right? So, you know, if I'm a developer in today's world, there's a whole variety of things I need to know about. Bare metal is definitely one of them. Um, I used to sort of hear this joke about, um, you know, that we sort of lost our way, you know, back when we had, you know, dynamos and all these other things, you know, sort of this like idea of a Heroku developer, right? That, that doesn't really know what a computer is, um, but we've sort of like the pendulum swung back now we need to get access to accelerators and GPUs and, you know, all these sort of purpose-built components, ARM, you know, different things that make bare metal much more relevant today than it was even, you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah, so I have a slightly different tack on that. Um, I think developers are being forced to care about the infrastructure to a certain extent, but by and large, they don't want to. 
We want to focus on building value with our applications. And the advantage that this whole edge world is bringing them is that they can now move those workloads closer and take advantage of the networks, move them closer to the consumers by taking advantage of the networks. The challenge they have though is this is fairly complex. Um, you know, all this choice that you've got to pick from within the public cloud, within the private cloud, within bare metal, and ultimately developers don't want to have to become infrastructure experts. And the value of services like, like ours and Equinix Metal is that they can consume metal services, they consume these edge services, but through a very simplified, very standardized methodology, which means they don't need to be infrastructure experts. We can be the infrastructure experts and just provide them access to the required services. And that's the real power of what Equinix Metal is offering, along with, of course, all the other Equinix networking offerings, and then overlaid with a simplified hybrid cloud access model um, is really, really what we're driving towards for developers. You said what we all like to hear and talk about, but the fact, if you look, you know, uh, Sean, is that uh, a lot of things are moving to developers' pipeline. You know, they yes, it, ideally they should just focus, but you know, security is moving into their pipeline. You know, site reliability. The, that's why our rules are changing. We are getting new labels, but actually uh, things are ending up in their you know pipeline. So and that's where the role of these partnerships come in. Yes, their rules are changing. A lot of things are stopping at their table to make it simple. So uh, let's talk about the reality in the space versus the new things or new uh, movements and revolutions, DevOps, DexEvOps, we like to talk about. If we want to really look at that, you know, DevOps has been around for a number of years, in my opinion. And it's been, we've been talking DevOps for at least 10 years. The reality of DevOps is that it's still really complicated. It takes an enormous amount of expertise just to handle that layer between application value and infrastructure. So yes, a lot of it is moving towards the developer, but developers, you know, your, your developer doesn't want to, can't deal with that complexity as well as trying to build value at the same time. And I keep coming back to this value statement. Ultimately, we want developers to be building value for the organizations that they work for. So our job as an industry is to make them still be able to get access to that um, infrastructure, still be able to choose the GPUs that James was talking about or you know, the other specialized hardware components, being able to select compute that's closer to their consumers, but do that in a much more simplified way, ideally a more standardized way, you know, through a standard set of APIs, you know, for example, Kubernetes is, is a standardized API that we can all address. Um, and I think that's our job as a infrastructure focused industry. Yeah, we, we see the same thing, you know, maybe on the other end of the spectrum with the private data center customers, right, that have aspirations to be more cloud front, cloud forward, cloud native, whatever term you want to use, right? Um, they, they're making the investments, hiring people, you know, bringing in development teams to, to sort of do these things. But the, the struggle has really been on that complexity. You know, the networking we're finding is, is a big challenge for a lot of customers, right? Um, it's one of the conversations we spend a lot of times with Marantis and a lot of the value that we're building with Marantis around private networking, you know, for public cloud, right? How do I make things more private? How do I sort of, um, you know, dive, diverse myself across the, the globe in a way that makes, you know, my users have a better experience. And, you know, we get things where customers are like, yeah, I want to get out of the data center business. I don't want to manage the global network. I don't want to manage hardware, but I still need to have access to these low level primitives. And I need to have, you know, a consistent API and a consistent console in which to do that. Yeah, I think I, if I can extend on that, it's, the customers want the ease of use of public cloud, but they still want the self-determination of self-build. So where Equinix fills the niche, where we're filling the niche now is we're giving them that choice so that they can have that self-determination without necessarily being forced into a very rigid structure that comes from public cloud. Um, and that's one of the huge amount of power that we're offering um, consumers. Sean, if I may ask you, and this question depends on you know how you feel about it, is that uh, Mirandis, for, for, of course, you know you folks, you know have been you know all the way from early days of OpenStack, you were early there, and then you know, Kubernetes and all those spaces. So you folks work in a different space. 
are there any use cases where you felt that, hey, Equinix Metal actually enabled you to serve that use case better? Yeah, so, I mean, a couple of big ones for us are in the financial services space right now. Um, we've got customers who want to be able to expand rapidly, want to have access to market services, as an example, so market aggregation services. Those services are already existing within the Equinix infrastructure. Um, by being able to put their workloads with inside Equinix Metal, which exists within that ecosystem, by us being able to offer them the Kubernetes um, platform to run that application on, but they maintain the proximity to those market aggregators. So that's a very powerful use case for them. Low latency, easy access to the network, and then throwing on top of that, they, they are using the hyperscalers. So they want the bare metal capability for high speed, high performance. They want access proximity, which is I think an important word to the Equinix story here, to those market aggregators. But they're also running significant workloads within the hypervisors. And that's where Equinix really provides an amazing ecosystem for us to, to leverage for those customers. Um, another good use case too, as an example, um, you know, smaller telcos. Smaller telcos often have the edge infrastructure, but they're looking for aggregated services at the core where traditional public cloud services maybe are not suitable for them because they need access to that bare metal. They need access to that high performance capability at the core. They could start to have that public cloud on demand service so that they can grow as they need to by leveraging Equinix Metal again. And that connectivity provides them that core. Yeah, so um, with, uh, with with Mirantis, right, a, a lot of the focus on our, our integration effort has really been around creating that proximity, both from a latency and performance perspective, but also, you know, just a logical networking perspective. Um, one of the biggest challenges, you know, we've seen with some of the other sort of traditional customers with going to public cloud leveraging hyperscalers and leveraging cloud native is that networking component. And Equinix really is the best place to, to establish that type of connectivity where effectively, you know, Metal becomes a logical extension of my data center, right? We have a customer right now in, in DC that uh, we spent a lot of time helping them figure out how do we get, you know, 40 gigs plus of throughput um, from their existing data center and their existing public cloud deployment into metal, right? They wanted a, a disaster recovery use case and a place to just drop and expand their Kubernetes cluster. And it was really hard for us to get them on board, but once we unlocked that networking connection and showed them, hey, here's how you get that throughput. And oh, by the way, it's, you know, tenths of a millisecond, you know, this looks just like their data center. So they can literally add a rack or a row or a server or a cabinet or you know, the 101st server that they can't fit in their existing rack or, you know, when the public clouds run out of capacity or have an outage, they have, you know, another option that's literally right there. And we're watching them grow basically automatically from, you know, nothing to over 100 machines in, you know, a matter of days. Sean, if I ask you, you know, there are other players also like Equinix. Why did your folks choose Equinix Metal for this partnership? We've had a long relationship with Equinix. We've worked with them for a long time um, on various projects. I think a couple of core items that were, were important to us. Firstly, the Equinix um, footprint, the global footprint of Equinix, uh, allowed us to expand and hit our global customer base. Mirantis is spread across the world. We've got a lot of interest across the world. The fact that the technology that they're using is proven um, and trusted, um, you know, right back from you know, the, the packet days, um, the flexibility of the team and the great team that we get to work with at Equinix, people like James um, and others who have been heavily involved in helping us get this right. You know, this has been an iterative process. We started at one point and we've moved through it. And with their help and with our technical teams, we've, we've been able to build a really effective service together. Um, and that partnership and that true partnership, willing to work with us, work through challenges, identify different customer use cases with us has been a very powerful way of working. And that falls through into the way we're dealing with new customers on the platform as well in that relationship. James, if I ask you uh, that these uh, partners like Verentis, they also kind of help you improve your services because they also bring new challenges to you. So can you also talk about how do you see them, you know, kind of making Equinix Metal better? Um, you know, being a consumer of metal, during their development efforts around building this offering, 
Um, we learned a ton of stuff, and it's one of the reasons we really focused our investment with them on private interconnect and how do you do, you know, what I effectively call bypass the public internet, right? Which is a thing that most enterprises, you know, startups, hyperscalers alike are all very interested in, right? Um, we've seen this pattern as companies mature and grow that they'll expand their network and, you know, build things a certain way. And, and that's really the opportunity we had. And, and I think um, the Marantis team really helped influence how we think about that. Um, you know, we're launching a new feature with our interconnect that allows you to do things in a much more automated way and um, get private interconnect effectively in real time, you know, using a Terraform script. And a lot of that work came directly, you know, from our interactions with the Marantis team. And, you know, to give you an idea, right, we're, we're on shared Slack channels and there's a bunch of people involved in different threads and developers. And we're talking about, you know, Go libraries and you know debug and it's it's a very um, you know deep technical relationship from that perspective. I'll also add that even beyond that deep technical relationship, they've also supported us to do some massive scale testing. Um, you know, we've done Kubernetes scale tests over hundreds of nodes, spun up nodes um, you know, in hours. We've gone you know, when you talk about building a Kubernetes cluster on bare metal, on demand with hundreds of nodes in it in a matter of a couple of hours. That's quite impressive. And that's where they've supported us and helped us get that right as well. So. From the Equinix perspective, um, we've really been looking a long time for, you know, these kinds of partners that are go to, right? I think there's a vacuum today in the industry around cloud native and, and managed service around cloud native, right? If you don't choose the Amazon or Google path, you know, really, where do you go? And I think, um, you know, we look forward to, to helping Marantis be, you know, hopefully that, that sort of alternative cloud partner, you know, that's open source, that's, you know, democratic, that's, that's free, that's open, that, that's accessible, right? And I think, think there's a lot of opportunity in the market for us both. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful point. I mean, for us, it's really about giving the market the choice. We're not going to dictate to the market what infrastructure, what systems they can use or how they should go about doing building their infrastructure and consuming that infrastructure. And by giving, working with partners like Equinix, we give our customers that choice. Um, and we want to you know, provide that to the market. And we believe that's a strong part of the future you know, on this open source journey that we're on as a company. James, uh, Sean, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course, talk about your partnership. And also, I, as I said, I like the last part where you talked about the alternative cloud providers so that there are more options for customers where they do want to have that experience, but they want full control. And there are so many reasons, especially if you look at Europe, I mean, the deployments are there where they do worry about that. So thanks for bringing that insight into that. And as usual, I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks for having us.